This is Dr. Jay Mauser coming to you straight from Summit Bible College here in Bakersfield, California. And we have some uh, things we want to talk about today. And I wanted to start off by saying that Summit Bible College is a college here in Bakersfield. And we have uh, doctorate degrees, master's degree, bachelor degree, associate degrees. And uh, we have uh, uh, um, studies in Christian counseling and chaplaincy in leadership and so on and if you if you want more information feel free to give us a call at 661-328-1151 and we can uh, discuss this more with you even send you a catalog and you can thumb through it and we'll be happy to answer any questions but today i wanted to talk to you about our athletes now i wanted to, to lift up some athletes that needed to be celebrated i know we have a lot of talk about athletes that are in some controversy and doing and saying some things that uh, uh, might be a little edgy, but I wanted to lift up some Christian athletes that are really uh, being good examples, not only for their families and for the, for the church, but for the kids that are also athletes. And uh, talking about how they can improve their life, how God has worked through them. And of course, we know that the Los Angeles Rams won the Super Bowl this year and many players have been praising God and uh, have been professing, professing their Christian beliefs. And I wanted to start off, we'll talk about Cooper Cup to begin with. Now as you know, Cooper Cup is one of the one of the best receivers in the NFL. And as I was reading up on him, I, I come to understand that uh, over the off season, he worked really hard. He went to the state of Washington, set up his backyard to do some athletic uh, training. And he trained really hard running up hills, uh, doing maneuvers that would make that really help his techniques in uh, becoming a great receiver and it's really proved uh, to come out looking gr really wonderful as we saw throughout the season no, not only throughout the season but in the Super Bowl as well now Cooper Cup has uh, has um, so far he's he went on to say wonderful question um, I think the thing that he has taught me is that um, you will find you will find that you are most fulfilled. You will find the most joy um, when you are rooted in your purpose. You know, and, and um, specifically rooted in, in His purpose for you. And you know that to me has been one of the best things about this year. Of uh, beyond all of the um, all the games that we won, beyond all the you know, honors, accolades, whatever um, it is. You know, I've just. I've had so much fun being able to play this game, and you know my my motivation. Like I touched on earlier my motivation coming in to you know every single day is to run the race in such a way as to honor God um, and the passions that, and the um, talents that He has given me. And um, when I'm rooted in that, I I am at I am in a great place. I am able to play freely. I am able to um, you know love my teammates. I'm able to. Um, be a better man, a better football player, a better husband, a better father um, when I'm living in that place. And, um, you know, I, I can truly, I truly believe beyond all that stuff. We had not won a game this year, um, but I had, you know, spent that time and, you know, was living in that place still of living freely. I believe I would, this would still be my favorite, favorite, my favorite year I've ever been um, a part of playing this game of football because I've been living in that place. Um, I've been enjoying every second of you know, being a teammate to the guys that are here, and um, and just being able to honor God every time I step in this in this facility. So uh, I think that's the the big lesson for me. And he's a man that that's saying he roots himself into God, and because he roots himself into God, he can he can uh, um, up his game, up his ante, um, um, up up the. Uh, up the uh, uh, the bar, so to speak, and that's what he's been doing. He's really, if you watch him, he's running, he's sprinting, he's running past the backfield uh, defenders, he's uh, running through the backfield defenders, and the way he moves, he moves the techniques, and he's he's as he said this, he's giving praise to God, and God has given him a spirit of athleticism, given him a spirit of not only that but also. Uh, one that that gives all praise to Jesus and he is a very if you hear him talk I encourage you to listen any to any uh, uh, news clips he's talked and, that he's been speaking in and um, he does lift up God and he does praise God he talks very humbly and very graciously and one of his team teammates uh, Aaron Donald who is the uh, defensive tackle has done wonderful some wonderful things 
uh, through as an athlete and also as a Christian. But he stated, after winning the game, the Super Bowl, he said, the best feeling in the world, God is great, God is good, it's a blessing. And that, that was a short quote, but that's something he, he did uh, proclaim as a Christian. He praised God and he um, lifted God up, giving him all the blessing and all the, all the glory to that, to that day. He didn't lift himself up, but he said praise to God. And we all know that um, when he was playing in the game, particularly the, the Super Bowl, he was making some wonderful plays, doing some tackles, and, and of course he looked like he was enjoying himself. But as, you, as I can say, these athletes work very hard at what they do, and they're very talented. And it takes a lot of heart to go out there and to give it a lot of game and then to come out and say praise to God. He's the one uh, who, who has all the glory. And um, I'm also going to talk about another teammate of theirs, Andrew Whitworth. Andrew Whitworth said, stated, he accepted Christ at a young age, but it took many years of failure and pain for me to realize what it means to follow Christ and seek God in every aspect of my life. And he goes on to say, I carried with me the guilt of how I had failed my life, my, my life, my family, and, and God. Ironically, I blamed God and pulled away from him. And what he was, of course, saying that he lived a secular life, but he kept feeling the pull and the calling of Christ. And as you know, Christ, when when when, a, when one of his own uh, fall away, like the like the lost sheep, he goes after them. And Andrew Whitworth uh, was fulfilling that pull, and he stated, "I went back to church and felt God working in my heart. I fell to my knees and told God I was tired of running. I was ready to live the way He called me to live." And he, he as he went on to talk, he felt God coming. Uh, coming over him, the Holy Spirit filling him with a forgiveness and a graciousness. And God does have the grace to overcome them as well. And he does love them and he, and he calls them. And it's our duty, if you hear about that, to pray for those athletes and to pray for the athletes that are, that are showing grace to God as well. And I wanted to lift up a, a, also a new, she's not too new, but she's an Olympic gold medalist, Sydney Laughlin. Uh, she won the gold medal in the hurdles. And she had a, uh, one of the things she would state after she won the hurdles, of course, is she would, she talked about how she loved her country, how she loved representing the United States. And we know that to, the way things are today, that that itself is a con has for some reason turned into a controversy. If it's to become more like Jesus, there is so much joy in that. There is so much joy in that. Because nothing else matters. The things of this world, social media, drama, it doesn't matter anymore because I'm trying to emulate a life worthy of glorifying God. That is the whole point of my life. Why I run, why I speak, why I act. Scripture says, no longer I, but Christ in me. Jesus now lives inside of me. When I was baptized, I died and was raised again with him to new life. I am a new creation. The reason I have so much joy is number one because Jesus is the Word of God. He is the way, the truth, and the light. Like, I am not saved because I'm a good person or because I deserve it or because I didn't do some things that other people have done. I don't deserve it. Simple as that. The littlest sin is still a sin. In God's book, all sin is weighed the same. Whether you lie or you murder somebody, it is exactly the same in God's book. So, for me to finally like understand and comprehend like this is a gift to be known by him to be chosen by him like it just makes life worth so much more if that makes sense things from my past life are washed away they do not exist anymore they do not hold me captive there is so much peace in that and you know there's always going to be things that come my way but just understanding like Jesus has already won like, <laughs> nothing can, it doesn't matter. It does not matter because he already won. He came and he conquered this earth. He died. He rose again. And one day he is coming back to claim his children. Simple as and that. And it is true. God, when you accept God, he makes your past clean. He no longer sees uh, what happened in your past, but he sees a beautiful and wonderful cr person that he's created. And he does that with each and every one of us, as he did with the athletes. And as you watch the TV, as you watch athletes uh, that are Christian and those that are Christian, remember those that are Christian, lift them up, hold them uh, uh, into a place that 
that you would pray for them and that God would show them, uh, reveal himself to us through them and as well reveal himself to other athletes through them, through their love of Christ and through the humbleness uh, that he provides. And also that as Cooper Cup said, he works very hard at, at training that he would also move these other athletes if you could remember that as well. But I wanted to take time to uh, remember these few athletes because uh, um, they are in the front lines, they are in the trenches and uh, the way the media uh, uh, portrays them and the way they, they um, lift them up, uh, we need to realize that they, they do need a lot of prayer and that, that will God move over them and to show them uh, more, of you, more of the love and that he revealed them, himself to them through them and to them and to other athletes and to us, us, us as well. And that that would become a testimony for other people to seek out God, to seek out Christ, and to possibly one day, as Christ would want us all to receive him as personal savior. And I want to, once again, tell you my name is Jay, Dr. Jay Mauser. I work here at Summit Bible College. And I just wanted to talk about uh, the athletes um, because I, I see the news really only talking about the ones that have a controversy to them, the ones that sort of have a, a darker movement. And we also want to balance that out, not saying that we need to only look at them, but we need to really look at the ones that are doing quite well, that uh, are the ones that are following godly life, a loving life, the ones that, that are uh, praising God in everything they do. And we, we need to pray for them and that God continue to use them to reveal Himself to other athletes and to the, to the public as well, just to arouse a curiosity about Christ, about what He did for us. And uh, um, we, all, we all need to strive for that. There is, as the Bible says, we all need to strive for the winning goal, for the, like the athletes that, that told the winning prize. And that winning prize is, of course, coming to know Christ and to living a godly life. But with that, uh, leave your comments. I would love to hear, read them and to respond to them and, and to answer any questions you might have in future broadcasts. And I, would continue, I will continue to uh, bring these to you. And I wish you well. And God bless all of you.